stream, trying to get these Missouri Tigers going. You know, we uh, had just legendary disappointment in the last stream. Uh, so, had a lot of attitudes, took us down. It should have been an uplifting year. Should have been taking a step up the ladder instead. I think we actually slid back a small amount. Uh, the good news is still got a lot of talent in here. Uh, Wendland didn't transfer out. Uh, we brought in our man Antonio Washington, four-star small forward. Still have Kellum. Uh, still have Brian Davis. A uh, guy like Juan Davis is going to be a good freshman for us. A little bit uh, nervous here about our point guard situation going into next year. Hopefully Hurd develops a little bit. Uh, we really just need him to get his passing and ball handling. We really need everything from him. So... I don't know, maybe we can, maybe next year's Antonio Washington will be a point guard. That would be ideal. What's up, Chris, in the chat? Here we go. That's right. So, I don't know, maybe we can land a big recruit there. Maybe we need to uh, look again, some kind of Juco or something, because uh, this looks rough for next year. But even if we brought in, I mean, we could bring in another shooting guard, roll somebody over. I mean, Davis isn't great. Wilcox can at least pass. He can't handle uh, but that's the other thing. Wilcox can develop as well. So, I mean, we've got good guards. Uh, and we've got decent space in between them. So, we're doing all right. We're headed in the right direction. We just need to see exactly how this year is going to pan out. So, uh, just while people are, are here and we're here, quick look at what we brought in. It was Patrick Hurd, the freshman point guard. Uh, Wilcox is still listed as a freshman, but he was a red shirt. We brought in Antonio Washington, my man, Awash. And then Lon Davis, the power forward, he's going to be a big help on the inside for us. And uh, Benton was our other uh, recruit. And so you can see they're all relatively low ratings, relatively decent potential, which is about what we would expect in this range. Hopefully we get some decent attitudes out of them. But for now, it's time to hit the recruiting trail. So we should have, let's see if we kept the email first of all. Uh, we can. I think we already checked out the draft in the last one. But I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Mike O's went real late. And uh, the point guard didn't get drafted. So it was just Mike O's, and he was very late second round. Um, we do not. Maybe we do. Yeah, we do. So we only got one scholarship open? Is that right? Uh, three scholarships. Oh, we had a lot of players transfer out, I think. After all the drama, we had a handful of players transfer out. So we have three scholarships. We know one of them needs to be a point guard for certain uh, to replace Magnum. Otherwise, we've got... All right, so next year we only have one, two, three guards on scholarship, assuming no transfers. So we need two guards for certain. What else do we need? We're... Plenty fine on small forward. We need a power forward. Ideally. Because next year we should have Wendland and Snyder. And then Benton behind them. So yeah, just some depth of power forward is really all we need. If we have better options at small forward, at center, uh, I'll take it. But we need two guards and ideally a power forward. So that's what we're going to look for. But as always, we're stuck in this Great Plains region right now because our budget is so daggone low. So we just load up fairly much on the top tens, but even here. So I'm going to give this guy a go, see if we can generate a little bit of interest, get him on both lists. Same with Gary Dunn. Both of these guys' GPAs are fine. I can chase after them. He'll be fine. Let's see. Are there any two-star point guards out of Missouri that I can get a little bit of a head start on? No, there are not. So let's bounce through the rest of these positions, see if we can get luckier with the talent, uh, the in-region talent. That's a non-qualifier. Definite non-qualifier. He's too questionable. Not going to do that. All right. Maybe all the talent. What's up, Breeze? Glad to have you, buddy, as always. Whew, those two fours are scary to me.
we'll go ahead and grab all the three-star small forwards because we don't have a lot of guards on this list. So just loading up the list, ready to run it back and do it all again. Now, hopefully, this is the position we get lucky at. So we definitely need something here. Something here and something at point guard. I'm stopping for the most part once we hit and like I said we need big men I'd like to have five big men so if it's one power forward and four centers so be it as long as I can play we're really really devoid of, I can only come up with 40 guys that are three stars and above to even put on my list not interested not performing well in camps just to get on the list so let's go back and and grab some two star guys from some of these positions that we know are positions of need uh, let's definitely get the Missouri guy. And let's jump out and grab a handful of point guards here, I suppose. Because we desperately need point guards. Oh, we desperately need a point guard. Alright, our list is set. Get the call watch list going. Get all positions. See if we can get lucky on one of these guys. Well, really the one guy, Anwar Joyce. That would be a, well, in theory it would be a big pickup. We've yet to see how he actually produces at camp. Oh, he won't even visit us. So that's a bad sign right out of the gate on Anwar Joyce's interest in Missouri. All right, we'll just get a handful of these other guys. Once we've identified our targets, then we'll call. I'm not going to waste time on it for now. I'm not going to waste time on the film. We do, again, have to be extremely careful on our budget. That is a continual work in progress for now. Picking up another Charles Barkley. You know what? I've got if I don't Breeze, I don't think you're in CBGM. You ought to see the small forward that I've got in CBGM. He he shows up like he's five star, but he's not really a great score. He's an extremely ridiculously good defender and like maybe a generational rebounder. He's just like I think his defense is like eight or nine, and I'm pretty sure both his rebounding stats are tens, and he's got the rebounding attribute. So I mean, pretty ridiculous. All right. So it does not look like any of those visits went well. The Nate Howard visit went particularly poorly. Let's go ahead and bounce him off the list. Uh, Anwar Joyce I'll hold around. We haven't had a visit out of him yet. So let's get some of, these, some of this camp information. Yeah, I'll have to post it on the GM Games Discord somewhere. Uh, just so you can see, his name's Marty Shelton. And it's a very interesting player because looking at him, you would think he would be leading the team. Uh, but he's just like, he's so good at defense and rebounding, but he can't score. Like, he's not offensive whatsoever. I mean, he might be like mid-70. He's not an awful scorer, but he's certainly, you know, he's not going maybe seven, eight points a game. So, pretty disappointing in that aspect. All right, so look at this. Once again, India Elite, all of the talent is in the southeast, the west, and the uh, Atlantic, Atlantic, whatever that Northeast region is, Atlantic East region, something like that. All right, so Anwar Joyce wasn't even that great. So he has no interest. He wasn't that great. We're going to pull him off the list. None of these guys were good. Did I just do Johnson? Yeah. Bowden. Oh. All right, Damon Payne, that's definitely one to watch out for. And, of course, he's one of the ones that already visited and still is only, like, barely interested in us. But it's good to have options, right? All right. So not too much interesting here out of, coming out of that camp. So yeah, Payne is definitely, needs to be at the top of whatever list we have right now. Top 25 at Indy, that's awesome. Pretty sure that's the same way Antonio Washington was. Alright, so at least we're on his list. We're, where were we on his list? Oh, we're, we're number 10. Alright, so we got a visit, we're 10th on the list. I would have liked to have moved up there. Maybe over the course of you know the next couple months, our assistants can get him up there. So definitely a guy that we want to have on there. Let's go ahead and host a couple more of these four-star fellas. Because, uh, again, we need to be tight with the budget. So it's, we're, we're kind of rushing to get our regional camp information. Then we're going to cut these lists hard and hone in quick on some targets. All 
that actually does two things for us. One, it's going to save us some money. And two, it'll get us through the recruiting quicker, and we can get in these games, baby. Because I think, I think moving Magnum over to the point, he's got that uh, like ball handler, magician attribute thing going on. So I think that's going to be solid as could be at the point. Enjoyed it, not worthwhile. Okay, all right. Ton of people at Houston. See what that looks like. There's Damon Payne, top five again. So obviously Payne's a player. Point guard Bo Holmes. Was he one that's already visited? No, he's a three-star guy. He is on our list, so there is another big-time target, Bo Holmes, top five at Houston. And we can look. A lot of times you'll see this. Uh, all right, that was facilities. All right, we're not on his list right now. That's all right. Let me show you this, though. A lot of times you'll see this, top five at Houston, but he doesn't show up anywhere on the elite camp. Uh, it's because he probably went to one of the other camps. So, Bo Holmes, let's see if he shows up. A lot of times he'll show up right here. Bo Holmes, there he is. He was actually the MVP of East Coast Jam. So, that should be a massive target for us. It's already two very nice-looking players. Neither of them have a ton of interest in us. Craig Banks actually should be another target. Did he not get go to Houston he might not have even gone to Houston but we're absolutely going to host Craig Banks he's on our list no we need to add him uh, what is this is this Nebraska yep top 10 at Houston there's another host and another one that we want to clear out his information all right, so, uh, you know, we're looking for guards and power forwards and a couple of real nice targets there at small forward. So, you, know, you, you got to roll with it. That's why I add those guys to the list. What's up, Beach Bear? Glad to have you back in here, buddy. Uh, but that's why I add, even if I've got, you know, I'm targeting point guards and power forwards, but you got to throw these other guys on the list because I'm just trying to bring in talent. If the talent gets here, we'll make it work once they all show up on campus, right? So, we got that taken care of. We used a handful of our calls. Let's get these visits through. We can actually trim our list right now. Start saving money on calls right this second. There we go. Bo Holmes. Yeah. Top five at Houston, and he moves straight up to warm. So, that's a scholarship offer. No brainer. Bo Holmes. Very high hopes that we land him, because that was our number one position of need going into next year is point guard. Landon Bo Holmes would be massive for us. Not only an extremely solid player, but at a position that we desperately need some talent at. So, this is a dead period, which is a great time to go through here and trim our list. So, whatever. Joyce is fine. He can be, he can be on the list. Top 10 at Houston. That's fine. Tremendous work ethic. Love to see that. So, Marcus Adams, another guy I'm definitely interested in. All right, decent. We'll see how many of them were decent. There's top five. Decent. Didn't stand out. You're gone. Jason Hayes, get out of here. Top 25. Get out. Sammy Brooks, hardworking kid. Only gets you so far. Now, here we go. Here's an underrated point guard, two-star guy, top 25 at camp. Didn't stand out. A lot of these guys not standing out. All right, so got our point guards down. And usually when I do this, it trims it down to like five guys per. Now, we were a little bit light on prospects this year, so it is certainly possible that it could be even lower than that. And if I need to, I can go through and, and cut these guys that were like decent, not spectacular, like, like Nick O'Quinn. Is that all of them? All right, that's all the shooting guards. So, yeah, we got more room to cut. Those are decent. I mean, they're all right. They'll be fine to bring in. But, um, ooh, a month, top 10. Of course, all the small, the talent this year is at small forward, apparently, which is wonderful for us because we don't need small forwards at all. We just landed a great one. We've got a ton of depth there. All right, now these the top ones up here 
Oh, here it is, Gary Cliff, right? We already knew about him. He's a hard-working kid. Not standing out. And the nice thing is, once we get through these lists, Craig Banks. Oh, right, he was uh, he was from the Georgia camp, so we definitely want to keep him on the list. But he was either Georgia or East Coast. All right, so that one's done. Once we get through this, recruiting will be a breeze. We'll roll right through it. Be getting into those games, baby. Making our run for the tournament this year. All right, we know Payne's solid. You're very much not. Whoops, skipped one. Good to go. Good to get out. Vic Crosby. Solid name. Uh, work on your ball handling skills or your something. <laughs> work on anything but your name. That dude's like uh, Vegas Bruce. Vegas Bruce in the CBGM. Shout out to the coolest name in the CBGM. Uh, couldn't pass his SAT, so it's not enough just to have a really cool name. Sometimes you got to put in some work in some other areas. Got through the power forwards. On to the centers. We're almost there. Only three centers on the list, really. <laughs> Even less now. All right, so two centers on the list. Clear that up, we're down to 30 players. Nice. Advance through that. Oh, we got another warm down there. Oh, out of Gary Cliff. That was one of the good ones. So now Collier Taylor also popping up. Hardworking kid. Uh, I definitely like Holmes a little bit more. All right, so what do we want to do? Realistically, if we could land two good point guards and a power forward, that's ideal, right? So let's see. We'll we'll bring in the guys that were top 25s. Ooh, visit declined from a three-star guy out of Texas. That's interesting. All right. Sanders will come. Marcus Edwards, top 25. All right, so we got three power forwards coming in. See if we can get one of these guys. Give us a real good visit. Uh, show some interest. Get through these summer camps first. These are not our camps. We have no prospects there. I'm not worried about them at all. We just want to see if we can interest one of these power forwards with our beautiful campus at the zoo. Oh, yeah. We got two real nice ones right out of the gate. Greg Sanders went straight to hot. Top 25 in, at the regional camp. And we also got a lot of interest out of James Scott, who again, top 25 at Houston. So let's see, Marcus Edwards, he was also top 25 at Houston. Oh, we've already, we already had him in as well. And then these guys were just decent. We're not all that interested in them. So a couple of real good options right here in Sanders and Scott. Let's bounce over and focus on our point guards for this week. See Gary Dunn, top 10. That's a definite host. Holmes we've already had in. Top 25. That's a declined from Richard Crean. I never liked guys named Crean. Probably related to Tom somehow or other. All right, Mark Nurse, he'll come on in. That's it for point guards. Now we'll also take a look here at shooting guards. So, Clint Johnson, already warm. Ernest McPherson. Oh, he's an in-state guy. Had a good camp. Love it. See how that works out for us. So, you can see we've only got a couple of guys left to, to even offer. We're still at 15000 on the budget, so that's exactly where we want to be. So, I'm feeling good about this recruiting season so far. Uh, I think we're going to wrap up these targets, blow right through it, and we're getting to game time. Ooh, I can't wait to get the game time. Wendland, see what he can do now that uh, his his foe, Mike O's, has moved on to bigger and better things. Uh, they're in the NBA. Stapleton wasn't great, right? Neither was Taylor. Crean won't come. Jerk. Oh, Anwar Joyce. See, he's now he's moved up to cool. And now he'll take the visit. All right, let's see how it goes. 
Because I think after that, you know, regardless how that goes, I think I could probably take Collier Taylor. He could be the kind of guy that I red shirt. Bo Holmes is definitely solid. Very interested in him. And then Greg Sanders or James Scott. We can wait until uh, August 21st to see how that one goes. So let's go ahead, take this visit, see what happens. All right, so nothing crazy there out of Joyce. Uh, we've got the visit out to Holmes. What do we want to do? Uh, let's let's let it go one more week. Hit August twenty first. Then we'll get we'll check uh, where we're at on Taylor's list versus the shooting guard. All right, so Holmes has got us right there in his top three. That's good stuff. We've already got him offered. Taylor, we're in the top seven. Nobody's way way ahead of us. So we definitely want to unlock the rest of these. This is very possibly the other guard that we offer. Clint Johnson. Ooh. We're way back here. Texas A&M, Duke, Baylor, all ahead of us. He He's a four-star guy, though. He's almost a top 50 prospect. He's definitely got... You know, the, the stats, he's definitely got this over here. And the thing about this, you know, I, I, I usually, the way I feel about it is the camp performance is current ability, and then the rankings are potential. So, Clint Johnson's very high on that scale. Collier Taylor's not low on it. He's not low. I do feel like we've got a better chance at him. Uh, that's going to be the other offer that I send out at guard. But we will we should we should be able to have four visits. So Clint Johnson is going to be our other visit. Well actually no. The other power forward is going to be our, our fourth visit because we desperately need that to happen. So we can take a look here. James Scott. Alright, we're in his top five. Alright, good stuff there. Greg Sanders. Uh, we're far and away as number one. He's got terrible defense. He's got terrible defense, though. James Scott is so much better scouting-wise. I mean, the ratings aren't a massive difference. Uh, the, the stats aren't a massive difference. Sanders looks like a better rebounder. Better at steals, also. But that uh, he's only he's a C-plus at defense. Sanders is, he's rated really poorly, uh, but we're far and away like this is a, an easy get. We've already got uh, Lon Davis, the freshman, so Sanders can totally be a project. We can let him simmer for a while. We need to unlock his information. So let's sim it to the next week, unlock Sanders' information, and then ooh, we're going to need to unlock Scott's as well because he's our fourth visit. Let's get both these guys totally unlocked here. Get right to the end homes. We're going to burn right through this. Right through this recruiting session. Number one on his list. What a shock. James. All right, we already got most of him unlocked. <laughs> IDK. There we go. Chat him up. He's got to go. We're out of time. Cool. Let's get all these emails. We're not on anybody's. Uh, nobody on the Norton. No big surprise there. All right, offers out. Everybody's nice and unlocked. We can go ahead, pop through a couple weeks here. We got our backup options, uh, both at the power forward and at the guard. We've got a backup option at each. Hopefully we don't need them. We just land our top three options and go on about our business. Still got $12,000, which is right. You know That's my sweet spot headed into the in-homes. That's exactly where I want to be. So, so far so good. You can see Sanders got reevaluated. They moved him down to two stars, dropped him a couple hundred places. Look at that. Damon Payne moved up to warm. Now, he was top five at Houston. But we're not. If we were in his top ten, I would strongly consider changing around my offer because Damon Payne is a significantly better player. 
Mm. How high? We're at warm, which is at least just a notch below. How good is our coach's recruiting? Oh, it's a 76. I might be able to steal him. Let's think about this. Now, here's the thing. Marcus Edwards, we pull his offer. He'll get pissed. Oh, no, wait. I'm on the wrong guy. Sorry. Greg Sanders. Uh, okay. Now, see, if Iowa wasn't hot here, I would totally revoke this scholarship, you know, because he would just drop down to cool and then try to battle back for him. With Iowa being right there neck and neck with us, you know, I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and stick with our boy here. He wants to hear about location. That's all good. We are going to make Damon Payne our other visit, though. Because if we pop right up to first on his list, I'll pull this other point guard real quick. If you can get a top five camper, that's good stuff. All right, just like Mr. Holmes here. Uh, he's into location. Aren't we all? Same for Collier Taylor. That's our offer, so let's get it. Let's get it. Let's knock this out right here. Week one of uh, week one of in homes. Take care of business, boys. Get it done on that recruiting trail, so we can hit the hardwood. Get off the recruiting trail. Get in the gym. Bo Holmes is ours. Yes, Bo Holmes is ours. That's the huge point guard get that we needed. Top five at Houston, folks. That is awesome. We didn't lose any of the others. I'll be interested to see how much our opinion swayed with Damon Payne. Call your Taylor. We jumped up to four, but we didn't jump up all that high, actually. Look at that. Payne moved us to hot, moved us straight into the thick of things. Sanders actually moved out. He cooled off on us? Yeah, that's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer, guys. You got to do it. Sometimes you got to take a chance. Doesn't always work out. But good news is we got James Scott as a backup. So Sanders will probably be pissed at us now that we we pulled that offer. But we've got this other option here. So let's see how that goes. Then we can jump out on... Where was Martin Nurse? He's top 25. He's top 25 at Houston. Wow. Uh... His interest just not got up. Pulling Taylor's offer. Moving it down here. Give him the location bit. And then... Ernest McPherson. Top 25. What does he want to hear about? What do you want to hear about, Ernest? Alright, you gotta go. That's cool. Did he not answer? All right. Academics looks good. So we've got all four visits out. Get this scheduling out of the way. Uh, we got one of our big three, and he was actually the most important, the biggest position of need, which is awesome. Oh, my gosh. I got to send a thank you card to my AD. All right. We got to go on the road once to Gonzaga. Uh, and then we have our rivalry at Illinois. But everything else, look at this home schedule. If that's not eight wins, we're doing something wrong. So, shout out to the AD there. Uh, scheduling us into a fairly nice out-of-conference record, or at least what should be a fairly nice out-of-conference record. Bad news, folks. We lost one of these recruits. Don't know which one it was. Now I do know which one it was. Damon Payne going to go to Texas Tech. So we didn't convince him it's all right mark nurse did he not care for what we had to say or what was the deal there let's go out here and talk about location again with him parent info no parents don't have a whole lot of control here we'll try it again with him as far as the rest of these guys marcus is a top 10 See if we can get Marcus Adams to be a little bit interested. Maybe. All right, so 
So James Scott moved up to hot. We're second on his list. Hardworking kid. Visit. Location. Offer. Boom. So Texas Tech stole Damon Payne. I had I had delusions of grandeur. Thought we could pull in a couple of top five campers. Uh, not quite there. But it had to have been. Was it even close? Yeah, look at that. We jumped up to third on his list. So, super close to landing guys like that. Not quite there yet. Still got the one visit left. We can see if we can get Sanders interested again. At all. Oh, how much money do we have? Yeah, we still got the money. So we can visit him again and see what he has to say about it. Let me go, because that's... All right, yeah. Scholarships are all out. Sometimes I like pick all my targets and send everything, set everything up, and then I completely forget to actually offer the scholarship. Yeah, you know, it happens, random task. Not going to lose sleep over it. We've got what we absolutely need. Now these other two are just about reloading, you know, deepening that pool of talent that we're uh, building up here. Love to land both of these. All right, so James Scott has made a decision. He's coming, so we got our power forward. So now all that we're looking for is that uh, that second guard, and we can really go either way with it. And see, Sanders, he was coming around, so we could have gone there if we needed to. All right. The point guard, Mark Nurse is not enjoying our visits at all. What is he telling us? He hates it. All right, so those visits aren't going great. Yeah, it, it can be frustrating, but, you know, we can live with it. Well, what I want to do here is go to guards only, get rid of anybody who's already committed. We can leave Holmes on there. So we, you don't want to forget about your boy. Mark Nurse is off the list. Now let's take a look at the rest of these guys. See if any of them stand out talent-wise, because none of them stand out. All right, Marcus Adams definitely stands out. He's not interested. So you just got to move on. Gary. Also not interested at all. So these two are both outstanding guards. And neither of them are interested in us. Which is frustrating. Decent. Decent. Here's a top 25. Now we're. He's cool on us. But we're toward the top. So I don't know. Maybe. Talented player that could work harder. Ugh. And then Collier Taylor. All right. So McPherson is. Wait, where's our other scholarship? I gotta go get it off of Mark Nurse, don't I? I took him off the list. I always forget that taking him off the list does not revoke the scholarship. All right, back to the list. Colin, watch list. Guards only. So, a couple options here. Marcus Adams is a, the best player out there. Pretty sure we already visited him, though. Yeah. And it didn't really, uh, it didn't really register. But he would be a huge get. Ernest McPherson would be decent. That one. I don't know. They're they're both kind of stretches, to be quite honest. They're both kind of stretches. Uh, let's just offer the scholarship to the better player and visit a handful of these guys. We'll go ahead and... Can we visit Dunn as well? No, we're super low on team budget. We're down to $2,600. So we really can't do that. Marcus Adams, you get the location bit. McPherson, you get the academics. And those are the only two visits we're making. If we miss on both of those, uh, we're going to need money just to call people f throughout the rest of the year. So that's what I'm saying. Like, right around $12,000, I can usually get through a recruiting season. So, All right. This is probably, probably not happening. He's most likely going to one of those schools. Ernest McPherson might not be happening either.
I don't feel like Collier Taylor is really an option anymore. Gary Dunn was never an option. So I think we just let I think we just let the Adams offer ride. If we can pull back, you know, if Adams declares somewhere else, we'll throw it over to McPherson or even Dunn if we have to. It doesn't cost anything to make an offer. Let's get the full list. Anybody who's not a guard is being pulled off the list to save money. Guard, guard, guard. You're out. Out. All right, so that's our entire call watch list. If we don't get the, if we don't get that last scholarship out this year, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's more important to me to, to use them uh, wisely. Only bring in decent talent. So, here we go. Let's get this practice over with. Let's get into November. Let's get these ball games going. Here we are. What? What is this? Like season six with Missouri? It's time to put the pedal to the metal and take this SEC conference over. So we've got a ton of talent on the team already, a lot of talent developing. I feel really good about the guys we brought in, and now here we go with the, this crap already. Bryce Wendland is a thorn in my side. I thought with Mike O's gone it would be over, and it's just not. So I don't know what you do with this guy. All right, let's go ahead and suspend him. Jesus. Get it together, Bryce. You jerk. Makes me really happy to have Benton and Snyder. Uh, because, of course, not only could Wendlin leave, uh, I might want to kick him off. I don't know. He's our most talented center, which is frustrating. But he really pisses me off with this attitude. I mean, he's killed our last entire season and now already with this nonsense right out of the gate first week of practice of this season got a red shirt reminder I don't feel like I've got anybody I need to red shirt but it's probably time to set up this season's roster so let's take a quick look here at the roster overall See what we got going scoring-wise. Defensively. Look, look at Wendland on the defensive rebounding. None of my inside guys are really great shooting on the inside. I actually feel like maybe... I don't like to do it, but maybe this is a favor of the outside kind of team. Most of my scores are out here. They're all good jump shooters, and nobody can really do anything on the inside with the exception of the walk-on, who I do not do not like to play walk-ons at all, although he might actually be the best option. Uh, the best option as, as far as a backup goes. Like, obviously, Snyder's better. Uh, Benton is a freshman. Not great. Maybe this actually is an opportunity for a red shirt because we've got Wendland. No, it's not. We've got Wendland. We've got the walk-on to be a backup, but we don't have a third because Snyder is not available. And we only have one power forward. So scratch that consideration. Now, my other thought is how do I get all these guys on the court? I want Magnum on the court. I want Brian Davis on the court. Doug Kellum. I would like Antonio Washington to be playing. And then we'll offensive rebound, defensive rebound. Can Kellum or Washington play the four? Maybe. I feel like Kellum might be a slightly better with the inside scoring. So then we could let. I don't know that we have the depth at guard, though. If Patrick Hurd had shown up a little bit better, we really need Magnum, Davis, and then I suppose Wilcox will rotate through that. 
as our third. Maybe Hurd plays a little bit. Benton Wendland. Yeah. Alright. Got an idea of what I would like for our depth chart to be. Let's let the AI suggest all and see what it comes up with. So it wants to put it wants to put Washington, it wants to start Ray Battier and move Doug Kellum to the bench, which is absolutely not gonna be what I do. Absolutely not. It's got Lon Davis not even playing. He's our third bet. No. Scratch that thought, AI. So Washington, I like him small, foul, small forward and power forward. Mark Carroll. See a walk on? Yep. Sometimes I look at these names, I'm like, I don't know who in the world you are, my man. And it's almost always because they're a walk-on. Now, Leonard is a walk-on, but he's more talented than some of the others that we have. So, uh, you know, you do what you got to do, right? See, I don't think... I think Leonard is going to be better in the backup role here than Benton would be. But I do think Benton's ahead of Carroll and Palmore. Uh Pete Hurd as well. These guys are young, but I would like them ahead of these losers. And Rashawn White. All right, so all three of these guys down here are all walk-ons. Let's let the AI suggest a matrix on that. Now, I like that. Scott Washington playing 16 minutes a game. Wilcox, Leonard gets 10 minutes, okay. Patrick Hurd comes in for 8, gets a little bit of development. But we really rely heavily on our starters, uh, Davis, the freshman, only getting 26. Washington filling in for him, so I like that. We're going senior, junior, junior, freshman. All right. So I'd say around like 65% is about where I would like to have uh, my offensive set usage on this. Just I just kind of eye up the how old they are, how good they ought to be at these things. Try to set it somewhere in the middle there. So we've got our depth set up. Why do I have shuffle and high post offset here? Can we go 50-50 on that? Because I would very much prefer it. Yeah, we can. It's probably left over from earlier. Uh, they were probably better at one than the other when I got here. I am going to go favor the outside just a little bit because we don't have a great inside score. Take a look at the defense here. We've got that 1-2-2 two, two zone working. The 2-2-1 two, two, press. Love it. All right, everything's set up. We can roll right through this season now. We can hit our uh, goals here. We got to qualify for the NCAA, top half of the conference, win 15 games, improve school prestige. I think, ideally, if this season goes the way it should, we should be able to hit all these. Now, if Wendland decides to be an ass for the entire year, it might not happen. Uh, I do want to back my offensive pace down. I like to have offensive pace way up high when I'm far more talented than everyone else. Uh, if... If that's not the case, it needs to be much lower. A handful of those won't matter. Offensive crash boards, we'll also back that off a touch. Uh, defensive intensity. Nah, I like that where it is. Full court defense. Why do I have full court defense this high? No. Zone defense being high is cool. All right. This should be better. I wonder if the, the full court defense and the offensive pace actually didn't have an effect last year. If I didn't notice it and went with it a little bit uh, out of kilter, could have cost us some games last year. But we got to set it up for now. We're good to go. We're ready to get ready to hit that hardwood, ready to start uh, rolling through this, you know, the AD put up the out of conference schedule on this little silver platter for us. And so we're just we're just shining it up, getting ready to go. See how long it is before we hit the road here. We got Alabama, Birmingham, and Wyoming relatively early. Let's pop it on over here and get to Simmons. 1115, so two days away from opening day. I'm ready to go. Ready to see what Magnum can do from the point for an entire season. Uh, we haven't had any more incidents out of Bryce so far, so hopefully the early season suspension got his attention. We will double check. What's up, Chris? Had to, had to go get some good eats. I hear you, buddy. Always very important. We're making a... My wife's making a brisket upstairs in the crock pot. 
Let me double check this depth chart. Sometimes as you roll through the early season, it messes with it again. But I must have been past that point when I set it. All right, so we're good to go. Never miss the regular season action. That's right. You can't miss this regular season action. Hopefully, hopefully this year is everything that I said last year was going to be. I'm cautiously optimistic. We've got a couple of real good freshmen. Uh, we've got a couple of real good upperclassmen. We've got a great mix. Like We just have to keep the attitudes in check. So let's see. Right out of the box, 16-point win. All right, but Brian Davis suffers the injury. So that's not the way we needed game one to go. How bad is the injury? Strain calf. No worries. No worries. Postseason action, absolutely nerve-wracking. But I'm ready to get into postseason tonight. CBGM, guys, if you're... If you're not aware of it, I don't know what planet you're living on, but CBGM, the, the big-time conferences are getting into their conference tournaments. Uh, last night, I think, was the first preliminary rounds. Now we're getting into some of the other, you know, some of the better teams, like, I don't, I don't know, Louisville Cardinals. Uh, they're going to be playing tonight. So find out if my entire first season goes down in flames or if we can survive uh, to fight another day. All right, here we go. Furman coming into the zoo. See if we can keep this rolling in the right direction. Rack up the early season wins uh, so that we can pad the pad the old resume a little bit. Be ready for that uh, conference uh, uh, gauntlet, I suppose is the best word for it. Woo! Way closer than it should have been against Furman at home. Way too close. Win's a win, but... That one's got you thinking, right? It's got me thinking. We'll go through here. We'll get all the way through November and a little bit through December. And if there's too many more like that, we'll take a look at changing up that starting lineup, which is what I should have done last year. Uh, after we moved Flanagan and, and Magnum, after we made that swap in the starting lineup, things went so much smoother. So I usually try to do that right around midseason. And in the last stream, I just completely forgot, completely missed it. And it ended up, I think it ended up costing us some games. The attitude problems were the main problem. Uh, those two guys signed their LOIs. So we're still working on Marcus Adams. He's up to warm now. So I, I don't know. Maybe we got an outside chance if these other schools, like if none of them offer, which seems like a long shot, but why hasn't he already committed? If, if the offers are out there, why hasn't he committed? I don't know. That's weird. All right, so we'll keep working on them. That's why we try to save a little bit of money for those for those um, during the season calls. And if we do land him, it'd be a huge pickup. All right, while we coming in, let's see if we can get away from that uh, two point nonsense. You can't win at home by two and and keep your head held high. Not when you're playing Furman. So now we're playing Wyoming. If you want to walk. If you want to walk out of Mizzou Arena with that head held way up high, you got to dismiss Wyoming. All right, and that's what they did. That's exactly what they did. Brian Davis and Doug Kellum, a couple of juniors, I think they're both juniors, absolutely went nuts. Both of them went for 20. We beat Wyoming by close to 30 points. So everything that went wrong against Furman went right against Wyoming. So we're feeling good again. We're, we're right back uh, you know, keeping us even keeled. Early season, get a little low, get a little high, bring it right back to the middle. Uh, let's let's roll right through this, see what we can do, try to get this conference play, and see what happens. UAB, oh, all right. So this is neutral court. So UAB looks like a trash team, but is a, it is a neutral court? So we got to be a little bit careful, but we should be dismissing teams like this on neutral courts. This should not be a game. 20-point win, Doug Kellum, Lon Davis showing up. All right, Bryce Winland did okay. Now we've got Marquette. Whole different story here. Marquette's undefeated on the season. We are undefeated on the season. This is a couple of good teams show, showing up on a neutral court. Um, whoever wins this, it's a good sign. Not necessarily horrible to lose it. You certainly don't want to get blown out here. I would take a blowout uh, if we're the winners. Let's see what happens. Missouri and Marquette, we lose by 10. Not the worst thing in the world. Now, 
here's the best thing in the world. We just lost to Marquette. It's not a great loss. Or, I'm sorry, it's not a terrible loss. Take it or leave it, whatever. The best thing I took out of that, guys, we just lost a game, and nobody was fighting and complaining in the locker room afterwards. If you remember the last stream, every single game we lost, there were post-game incidents in the back. So, so far... We got the one email after the first week of practice. We suspended Winland straight out of the gate. And now we just took a loss and didn't have it <laughs> result in a fight in the back after the game. I feel good about that. I think that's a good thing. That's a sign of progress. Let's hope there's not too many opportunities for that uh, particular uh, sign of progress to pop up throughout the year. But we got another one right here uh, as we go on the road against the Zags. So... You know, they're three and two. They're not exactly world beaters this year, but you know, it is Gonzaga on the road. So, again, keep it close. Don't get blown out. If you can squeak out a win, that's wonderful. Oh, baby. 76 to 70. The Tigers over the Zags once again. Let's take a look at that one. That's one you got to get excited about, right? Where are we at down here? 76 70. Woo! Look at Lon Davis, the freshman. Woo! Look at Brian Davis. Look at Magnum. They're all doing their thing. Magnum with a six turnovers. You got to cut that out, son. You got to cut that out. Winland cleaning the glass. But I love in Lon Davis early here. But of course, Brian Davis, he's really the star. To see, I'm kind of mildly surprised he doesn't have the bucket getter. And it would not surprise me at all if he grabbed that bucket getter attribute for next year. Guys, we just went in and beat the Gonzaga Bulldogs on the road. Now, I don't suppose that they had uh, Chet Holmgren on the team yet. And if you all are keeping up with the real-life sports, you know, the top recruit in the country, Chet Holmgren, just signed uh, or just committed to play for Gonzaga. So, uh, you know, you thought Gonzaga was tough this year. Wait till you see what that guy does next year. I saw some highlights. He looks ridiculous. It's like a seven-foot guy that... Uh, handles the ball like a point guard. So, and, I mean, and it's one thing like Anthony Davis handled the ball like a point, like a guard, but Chet Holmgren handles it like a point guard. It's ridiculous. And maybe that's the competition, but it's something to see. So, obviously, they didn't have him around. We took him out on the road, big time, out of conference win. So, so things are looking up right now. Now we got North Texas coming into our arena, and they, they take us out. So you get the high of beating Gonzaga on the road, and then it's back to this low of losing to North Texas at home. Gosh. And this is this is the that painful, like, high 50s, low 60s prestige. Coach still not quite a superstar. Weird rut hard to get out of place but we're fighting through it all you can do is keep bringing guys in all right let's turn it around here eastern washington looks like a bad team new hampshire doesn't look great now you can drop one at home it happens things happen the the thing is look another loss another quiet locker room after the game so, again, we don't need to test that theory over and over again. There we go. Taking care of business. Brian Davis with 28. My word. Magnum with a double-double. 11 points, 10 rebounds for the senior point guard. So, we bounce back real quick and in a hurry. Now we got New Hampshire. This looks like a, a decent team, an average team. They're 5-2. But... You know, they're, they're New Hampshire. You should win this game at home if you're the Tigers. Doritos, Locos, Tacos, what's up? Been up for almost an hour, buddy. Rolling on through this. We got the recruiting out of the way. Got a couple of decent commits looking to come into the zoo next year. And we're, we're blowing through this season, seeing what happens. We've had a big win on the road at Gonzaga. We had a rough, a couple of rough losses, actually. Well, no, just the one, right? 
Uh, the Marquette loss was on a neutral court. That is what it is. The loss at home against North Texas was embarrassing. So let's see if we can avoid it here against New Hampshire. Yeah, easily. 16 points. Magnum with 20. Winland got also hit double digits there in points. And I didn't see who was third. Uh, but we're doing things. We're doing things. Let's see. Now, on the road at Illinois. Now, Illinois is number 17. They're 6-3 and three in the, uh, so far. Six and three in the out of conference, though, is not great for a team like Illinois. They can't be playing real significant tough competition, right? But we're on the road. So I think I, I'm going to call the game a toss up. And if it's significantly one way or the other, you know, we talk about, I keep talking about this up and down, up and down roller coaster of a season we had last year. You know, we kind of started off already again this year. Uh, this is certainly one that if, if the result is significant in either direction, it's going to send me one way or the other. Certainly. 100%. The Missouri Tigers. The Illinois Fighting Illini from the State Farm Center. What's going to happen? Let's get it, Mizzou. Let's get them. Get them. Ah, oh, three points. All right, and now we get the team incident. So, close game. I'm fine with that, but the team incident is going to make me mad. I swear if it's Bryce, I'm going to lose it. Oh, Patrick Hurd mouthing off about Magnum? No, 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 no. Not cool at all. What are you doing? You're a good guy. What are you complaining about? It is something to worry about. All right, cool. He apologized. So we keep him in line. You can get a quick glance here at the player impact estimate and look at Winland, 20. Even Brian, Brian Davis is only at 11. He's averaging 15 points a game. What else does he need to do? Winland got those big eight rebounds a game. That's looking nice. D'Antoine Mang Mangum, up over 10. That's why we call him Magnum. It doesn't work for me. Uh, with the N in front of the G. Just go straight for Magnum. It sounds cooler, too. All right. Seven and three. You know, I'll, I'll take that. The The backstage incident wasn't horrible. It was from a guy that if, if he acts up again, you know, we can suspend him. It won't be the end of the year. Wendland is walking that fine line so far. And uh, it was it was a close loss on the road to a top 25 team. And that's what happens when you go on the road against a top 25 team up until you become a really good elite type team, which we're just not yet. We're moving in that direction. We're trying to consistently move in that direction year over year. But it just takes time. Especially since, you know, I talked a couple of streams ago. What's up, Beard Town? Glad to have you, buddy. You can see what's going on here in the stream, 7 and 3, uh, trying to move in the right direction. Ladies call you Magnum, yeah, Coogie official. Yeah, that, that's why I've, uh, you got to go with it. If you got a name that even looks anything close to Magnum, you got to go for it, right? Uh, you know that's his nickname. You, you can't have that last name and Magnum not be your nickname, right? That's impossible. No way. No, there's nobody in the history of the world that ever had that last name that made it through high school and didn't get nicknamed Magnum. Just doesn't happen. Oh, so we got Brown. I think it's one of those uh, one of those academic schools. Whew. Scared me at first. I saw the one over there. Kellum Davis carry the scoring load. Wendland player of the game. Good stuff there. Uh, 13 points, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. I would like to take teams like that and just blow them out of the water, but we are playing a little bit of a slower pace here because we're not super talented yet, so well, we can deal with it. <clears throat> now this team, 3-7, and seven, this is a bad team. This is the last out-of-conference game. You can't lose a game like this. It's like New Jersey... Uh, what information technology institute something or other I, I don't know what this is but you can't lose to schools that you don't know what their acronym stands for that's a big time no-no on my list yeah so beer town says he's got a recruit he's doing in-home visits and they say they can't see 
They can't see him playing for him. And then they signed the LOI subsequently. The big thing you got to look for there, and you can probably back me up on this, after he told you he couldn't see himself playing for you, he still had interest. I bet he was still at least cool, right? Because if that goes to none, you got to cut bait with those guys. you got to move on. But I bet after he told you that, he was still cool. You know, he still had some interest. It was it was higher than none. So yeah, that happens, and that's what I've always told people. If it goes to none, you got to move on. But if they still got interest, especially I've had people tell me that, and I'm still their top school, so you just ignore it and move on. I, I think that's an indicator that you're not getting a huge boost. Like I don't know what exactly how the sausage is made, right? Yeah, see, you're top five. So he still had interest. He's still top five, and he still commits. I think that's an indicator of how much your in-home visit impacts their their interest or willingness. Like, if you picture like the old school college recruiting, whether it was basketball or football games, like the old EA games, you know how you had a bar, and once it got so high, they committed, right? So if you picture the same thing, you know, I, to me, the I can't picture myself playing for you. It's just you're not moving the bar. But if you're already the number one guy, if you're if the bar is already all, all the way out here, it doesn't matter. You just roll with it. So, that's my theory. Yeah, always cool, always warm. If they go none, you got to stop. They're not going to commit. But as long as they stay cool, warm, you're still in the top five, keep going after them. It's, it's still an option. You know, I don't know that it's your best option in all cases. you got to, all right, nice little 13-point win there against whoever this was. Yeah, I don't know that it's the best option, but it's certainly uh, still a guy that can commit to you. So, Glad to have that reinforced a little bit, though, because there's all these things that I see from the seasons that I play, you know, over and over. And I've played a lot of seasons in this game over a lot of years. Um, but it always it, it could always change, right? And you can always be surprised. You can always pick up something new. I got a lot of theories. I like to test them. And uh, the more they work out, the harder I push them. And, and sometimes they fail. Sometimes they don't work. You know, this is actually the first year, because I've, I don't think, up until this version of the game, I don't think I'd ever seen a player outside of the top 25 recruits declare early for the draft. And this year, I've actually seen at least one player that was ranked 26 who declared early. He was a four-star guy, ranked 26, and he did declare early. So it was one of the first times I've seen it. I don't know if it's just more rare. Uh, I don't know if it's something that changed in this year's version. But that's one of those things. Like you, you come up with a theory and you got an idea and you, know, you, you just see and you keep on checking and see if it works out. So I can tell you they're unlikely to commit uh, to declare for the draft, but I've seen the 26th guy in the country declare for the draft. So uh, keep your eye out. No promises. Last year I might have guaranteed it, but this year I won't. <laughs> We're moving into conference play. We got nine and three in the out of conference. Win over Gonzaga was big. Uh, the loss to Marquette, no big deal. The other two losses weren't great. Uh, but now we're in the conference play. We're on the road against Mississippi State. They're 11-2 and two out of conference. So this is a couple of good teams going up here. I put it at 50-50, probably a slight edge for Mississippi State. You don't want to get blown out here, but uh, we'll see what happens. Woo, nice win, baby. Nice win. Look, my man Awash finally pops up. Nine points into the top three of the... Uh, that night's performers for the first time. First time I've seen his name. All right, so Doritos Ocos Taco says he's had the 28th ranked player go in the draft. Hey, was that after their freshman year? Because I, my 26th guy, I want to say it was his sophomore year, maybe even junior year. I don't think it was as a freshman. So it sort of got me wondering if there's some kind of sliding scale about like you know, the top 10 or 15 have this percentage chance to go, and the next so many have this percentage chance. I don't know. I, I just try to watch and see how that works out. So, all right. Triple Kelly says, here's a theory. Setting off pace to average team scoring. He said in his offensive pace to his average team scoring rating. Okay, interesting. I see where you're going with that. And full court defense to average team athleticism. 
it, it could definitely work. I think it's those are good percentages. And, I mean, you won three out of four national championships. You can't argue with that. You can't argue with that. Yeah, I think that internationals are definitely yeah there there is an advantage to it, um, but there's disadvantages to it as well. And I've had it go both ways. I've pulled in great four year guys who started from the freshman year, and I've pulled in guys that were just absolutely worthless. Um, so it's sort of like real life; it, it can cut both ways. Now we got Tiger on Tiger action in the SEC in the zoo. And we pull it out by eight. That's what I'm talking about. Brian Davis with 26 points. Magnum drops 13 on him. And we start off SEC play 2-0. and This season is – we're on the – keep talking about the roller coaster, right? We're on the part right now where you're in the car and the chain's going like – and you know you're going up for that big hill. So now we just got to figure out, like, do we come crashing down or do we just keep climbing up all year and then, like, I don't know, do something fun like a loop-de-loop -loop at the top. Yeah, players that sit out, they will definitely the the going pro mechanism is based on their their ranking as a recruit. I'm fairly sure. So a guy can transfer in and then just go pro. I've had that happen as well. You know, you redshirt them, you don't redshirt them. It doesn't matter. They're not eligible when they transfer in. They just go pro. Or they come in, they play one game, they tear their ACL, they go pro. The the, the going pro mechanism has. In my estimation, it has nothing to do with actual performance. Now, if there's something in the background that somehow performance affects it, maybe I'm wrong. Like I said, I don't have any kind of you know, insider info or anything. But let's see here. Vandy looks like a bad team, 0-2 in the SEC, but they're finally at home. So can we go in and steal another one on the road? Oh, domination of Vandy. You know, we beat up on Vandy all last year, and we just went in and smoked them by 20. We're 3-0 and in conference and two of those are on the road, I think, right? Feeling good about this. Yeah, my boy Magnum. This season is definitely looking more promising. More uh, cohesion in the locker room. The record is bearing that out. The early results in the SEC are definitely ideal. Now, the, the difficulty level, you know, there's a couple of Doritos, Locos, Tacos talking about normal difficulty. The, the actual gameplay is is always going to be the same the difficulty level there's two one is on the recruiting and, and that's just going to affect you know how good the players you bring in are uh so if you bring in a good team even on brutal you know the simulation is going to run the same and then the other sort of difficulty setting is that uh coach pressure setting and i'm quite sure that's not not what you're talking about you're probably talking about recruiting but yeah you red shirt guys and they go pro and that's totally based now, I guarantee those guys were top 25 recruits, though, right, Random Task? I don't know that it's goofy. It's it's based on the pros being willing to take guys just based on potential. Here, Tennessee's coming into Mizzou. Oh, bad loss at home and a team incident. So, right, you know, click, 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 click. Stupid stuff like that. Uh, I always go back to... If y'all remember Daniel Orton that played at UK, he was like sixth, seventh man off the bench. He was absolutely terrible even in college, and he still went first round to the Knicks. I mean, uh, Brandon Palmore mouthing off about Brian Davis. All right. Pretty sure that's a walk-on, so. There is something wrong. All right, he apologized. Good to go. Didn't have to suspend him. So, yeah, you know, that that just happens. You get these guys that come in to college and they don't really look great and the NBA just drafts them anyway because they were a high rated recruit. You know, they're they're tall, they're athletic, the measurables work out. And I don't know, you know, they're I'm not a professional scout, they are, so they must be seeing something. And, and I think it's the same way in game. You know, if you brought in a top twenty five rated player, everybody'd be like, Where's that guy? Why isn't he on the court? And you as a coach, if you redshirt him, first of all, you get fired. So redshirting top 25 guys, to me, is uh, unrealistic in and of itself. But, uh, you know, 
you bring him in and he plays even average, but his measurables work out, the NBA is going to take him, no doubt. So I actually don't think there's enough guys that go pro early in this game. It is stressful to reload every year, and I'm right there with you. If I've got two guys, if I've got a five-star guy and a four-star guy, and I think they're equal in every other category, a lot of times I would feel more comfortable with the four-star guy. On the road, more Tiger on Tiger in the SEC action. Three and one in the SEC versus two and two. Mizzou, Auburn, and we fall short again. Magnum tried, Wendland tried, but we were just, just short on the road. So started off three and zero. Oh, couple of losses there. That's uh, all right. You know we'll survive. We're still set up. Let's go take a look at the schedule real quick. I know that one was on the road. Was the other one on the road also? Was that two in a row on the road? Now nah, the Tennessee loss was at home. That's a bad loss. We've got a win at Vandy and a win at Mississippi State. So overall, we're we're one ahead here as far as the home. You know, two homes versus three aways, and we're three and two. So we're one ahead of the, the scale there. But with the two road wins, we should really be sitting at four and one in conference right now. Yeah, absolutely. The stars mean nothing. you got to recruit off of who does well in camps. Uh, actually, who does well in camps is going to be current, poten uh, current ability for the most part, whereas the stars are going to be potential. And that's the other thing, like, that's why I say, if you've got a guy who's top 10 and he doesn't stand out at camp, that means his potential's off the charts, but he's not developed. So if you recruit him, it's a waste of time because he comes in, he sits on the bench, he doesn't contribute, or he contributes minimally, far less than you would expect him to, and then he goes pro after a year. Like, what'd you get out of that? It's worthless. Whew! Barely held off Mississippi State at home. We got him at home. They came. Jason Cleveland was looking for us. He dropped 26, and it just wasn't enough to down the Missouri Tigers. Move on to 4-2 and two in conference, 13-5 and five overall. Two wins away from the 15-win goal that uh, our athletic director set out for us at the beginning of the year. Headed toward the end of January here. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. Yeah, you get a little extra bringing in the one and dones. That's 100% correct. You bring them in, and they're ridiculous. The thing is, just like the keeping up with the scholarships, because like you know these guys are going to go pro, but the game doesn't, so you can't offer those scholarships early, and sometimes that part of it can burn you. Oh, at Kentucky. Oh, my favorite game of the year if I can beat Kentucky at home. 12 and 6 on the year. So, definitely a beatable team this year. Last year, they were stellar. This year, ranked 21st, 12 and 6 on the year, 3 and 3 in the SEC. They're beatable, but we're in Rupp Arena going 8 on 5. Yeah. 8 on 5 really takes its toll there. Big time loss at Kentucky. That hurt. It did not feel good. But we, how many road games? We're 4 and 3. What have we played? Is it only been four road games? I think it's been four road games. So we're still one ahead. That's all right. Yeah, absolutely random task. And the thing, the thing that's sort of weird is you get these sort of intermediate guys, and the thing I find a lot of times they got attitude issues. Like there's this weird thing. It's like the top, top guys are just stellar, good attitudes, but they're one and done. Then you get the next tier that are stellar players, and they'll stick around for years and good attitude and all that. Then this next tier that are also awesome players, but they got terrible attitudes, and they end up pissing your whole team off and transferring. That's I'm trying to get out of that and up into that next echelon, and I'm not quite there yet. So here we go, Florida and Missouri at Missouri. This one should be a close one. And hopefully, you know, this is one of those, there's a handful of games every year that end up being the difference makers. Sometimes you get a shocking win like the one at Gonzaga. Uh, sometimes you get a shocking loss like North Texas. Uh, but these are the ones you walk into it and you say, this is a difference maker. This is a close game. This is one we want to win on our home court. You're not coming into the zoo and stealing wins from us. Get out of here, Gators. Get out. Bryce Winland says, not today. 
D'Antoine Magnum says not today. Doug Kellum pitches in, and we hold we hold it down on our home court, moving to five and three in the SEC. So, whoo, fourteen and six, five and three, guys. We're headed. We're on a collision course with that NCAA tournament, and we're very, very much headed for all the things I said we were going to do last year. All the things I said that we were going to do last year. You know, they wanted to fight and complain and, and argue throughout that whole time when they could have just been winning basketball games. We got rid of some, and I don't want to say any of those guys had a bad attitude, but we got rid of the personality conflicts, and here we go, baby. Here we go. Absolutely. Into LSU. Not a great team. Could pull one out here. Could pull one out here. Winland pulls out the double-double. Kellum and Davis do their thing. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Great-looking games there. You know, I said I was going to go halfway through the season and then take a look at the performances, but just based on our performance as a team, I think we've got it. We've got it rolling. Um, mildly concerned if uh, Antonio Washington isn't getting enough playing time, but we're winning enough games that it shouldn't be a huge difference. We do need to double check. I, I do need to double check that he isn't one of these guys that like wants starters minutes as a freshman or something. Cause, I did not check for once starters minutes coming into this. No, he's all good. All right, so attitude. Look at that. Last year, every player on the team was a, at least a yellow, if not red. Look, Kellum's turned around. Battier's turned around. A lot of these guys turn around. Wendlin, his team relationships pick him back up. So this is all headed in the right direction. You, you cannot overstate how badly the chemistry issues demolished last year's team guys if you're not paying attention to chemistry on this i promise you it's having more of an effect than you think so this team getting along everybody being happy it's doing a lot for us to the point that here we come south carolina coming into our place and i think this 50 50 game may be better i think we should be slightly favored now we did drop you know home games to north texas tennessee so i don't want to get overboard with it but we're moving in the right direction. I'll call this game winnable. It's probably 51-49, but we're calling it winnable. Last year, this wasn't winnable. This year, we got a shot. We can beat, no, we can beat South Carolina. Uh, in theory. In theory, we can beat South Carolina. Uh, maybe we'll do it down on down the road. Tonight was an off night. You know, Frank Wilcox got hurt. Really uh, upset everybody. So let's see here. All right, sprained ankle. Not bad. He's good to go. Shake it off, buddy. Look at Windland. Still up there close to 20 on his player impact estimate. Still only a junior. With that attitude turned around, headed in the right direction, he should be a lock to stick around for his senior year. So, tough loss there at home to South Carolina. But we're still 6-4 and four in conference. This is very much looking like, uh, you know, looking like an 8-9 seed kind of team. Now we got to head to Georgia. That's going to be a tough one. They're twenty and three. Then we got Arkansas at home. Should should be winnable. And then Texas A and M on the road. They look like a very bad team. So that's one I, I kind of ex I don't often expect to win on the road, especially when I'm unranked. Uh, I expect us to win that on the road. I think th at the least we should be favored. Uh, but here on the road against the Georgia Bulldogs, that is not the case. So while a win would is not out of the question, it would certainly be on the in the in the ballpark of miraculous. So Missouri at Georgia, and it's miraculous! Oh, it's miraculous! The Missouri Tigers just went into Georgia and pulled out the sixty-seven to sixty-five victory. Oh my goodness, folks! Look at this. How did they do it? How do we win? We got 20 turnovers. Oh, 40 rebounds. That might be it. No, they had 45. They only shot 14% from three, but we only shot 22%. How do we win that? Where's the difference? Turnovers 19 to 17. 
fouls. I mean, it's an extremely close game across the board. No, I mean, he had four fouls, but it's not like one of their starters only played ten minutes. All right, so we just went and, and stole a real – oh, it went to overtime. Nice. Big win there. Big win. Puts us back on the right side of things. That, that's a nice one, guys. Miraculous. That makes up for, you know, the Gonzaga win, that win. They make up for those bad losses at home to North Texas, at home to Tennessee, things like that. So yeah, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of comfort level. Uh, makes me that much more confident this is this is a team that's safely into the NCAA tournament, although probably not an extremely high-seeded team. So, we're cruising, baby. We're cruising. 16-7. and 7-4 seven. Seven and four in the SEC. Arkansas at home. See if we got a little something for them. I think we ought to. The Razorbacks coming into Mizzou Arena. Headed right back out by 30 points. Don't come in our house. Don't come in our house, Arkansas. You're not welcome. Absolutely not. 30-point beatdown. Uh, I I don't think we're a tournament lock. We could certainly, you know, we just lose out. We're out of the tournament. Based on their performance and based on the rest of our schedule, uh, it, outside of an injury, I'll guarantee you this is an NCAA tournament team. And we can take a look. Let's bounce through some of these emails first, make sure we're not missing anything crazy. Let's take a look at this net rating. Net rating of 19. That's pretty solid. We're into February. Do we have a bubble watch up? Probably do. Uh, bubble watch. And there we are, it's sitting at 25. So what are you talking about there? That's like six, seven seed territory. So, you know, I said I felt like we were at eight, nine seed. Then you get the big win at Georgia. That that kind of justifies you maybe moving up a line. So we'll see how it goes. A loss at Texas A&M, even though it's on the road, in my opinion, would move us back down a line because that's a bad team. You, you, you can't lose 17 games and be a good team. So I don't care where this game's played. Uh, we should be able to play this game in you – know, go to Texas A&M, find their best player, go to his house, play this game in his driveway. We should still win. His dad can sit up there and play like a goalie or something. We should beat this team. doesn't matter where it's played. This needs to be a win. Whew. 69 to 60. Brian Davis doing his thing. 18 points. That dude, if he doesn't get the, the bucket scoring attribute next year, I'm telling you, I'm going to be shocked. He's a scorer. And he, he's, I understand why he doesn't have it because he is, you know, he's not one of those top tier guys. But he's right there on the verge, and the dude knows how to put the ball in the bucket. So now we get Ole Miss at home. This is, another, this is an average team. We're at home. I'm going to take the home court advantage here and hope that we do what we do. Oh, I see Vandy coming back up. The last handful of times we played Vandy, it's been ugly. I don't know what they're doing. But um, <laughs> at this point, my eyes are lighting up <laughs> when I see Vandy on the schedule. So, first of all, don't look past it. You got to get these Rebels out of Ole Miss. They're trying to come in. They're trying to uh, infiltrate your arena. Don't let them do it, Mizzou. Don't let them do it, Brian Davis. Uh, you let them do it. Where you at, Brian Davis? Big fat nowhere. How do you only put up 48 against Ole Miss at home? That's embarrassing. But that's the wiggle room that we have, right? You win a couple of big games. You go on the road. You do what you're supposed to do against bad teams. And you, know, you, can, you can throw some clunkers out there here and there. It's uh, You've earned it at this point. You can't throw a clunker every night, but you can throw a clunker here and there. We're still 18-8. and eight. We've still got a good conference record. <laughs> At Alabama, uh, should be one of these toss-up type games. They look like a decent team. Being on the road, uh, call it a toss-up. 6-8 and eight in SEC. We're 9-5. and five. <sighs> Yeah, it, it's a pretty good toss-up. 
especially coming after a loss like that. Hopefully this is one of those games where Davis and Kellum come back and just pour it in and steal a win on the road. No, 44 points. What are we doing? It's two games in a row. We got hell below 50. That's quite pathetic. So we've got some late February uh, trouble here. <laughs> little uh, speed bump on the way into the NCAA tournament. You know, I, I said the based on our performance, I thought we were a lock. And now they're going to try to put this theory to the test as they go on a two-game 40-point uh, whatever streak. Now we got Vandy coming in, so... Maybe they were looking ahead to Vandy also. Maybe they're all sitting around like, "Hey, we got we got Vandy Monday. You ready for? Or no, Friday. We got we got Vandy on Friday. You ready? How many are you gonna put up? I'm putting up twenty. How many are you putting up? I think that's what they might have been doing. They're looking past it. They're getting ready to go nuts on the Vandy Commodores. We've beaten them down like three times in a row. Now they're coming into our house. It's time to do it again. Put it on them. Run them out of the gym. Get right." Right now. <sighs> That's right. Thank you, Vandy. 32-point victory. <laughs> I don't know what that Vandy team's doing, but they are garbage. Absolute garbage. My goodness, that's a bad, bad team. All right, so... Now that we've gotten past our guaranteed 30-point victory, we got to go at Tennessee, who beat us at home already, and then at home against Auburn, who looks like a pretty daggone good team. So these are both very losable games. Good news for us, we're already 19-9. We're already 10-6. and six. We should be in the tournament if we can win one of these games or win a game in the conference tournament. One more win prior to the selection show gets us in, in my opinion. All right, so let's see if we can do it. Thompson Bowling Arena, Knoxville. The Tigers and the Vols. Not tonight. Back to this under 50 nonsense. Tennessee just beat us like we were Vandy. All right. It's just so frustrating. So... I mean, we've, it's not like we don't have upperclassmen to go on the road. You know, Winland's a junior. Davis a junior. I think Kellum's also a, a sophomore or junior. Magnum's a senior. We're not a team full of freshmen, so I don't know why. Like, I understand losing on the road. I don't understand losing by 30 on the road. But yeah, 100%. They gave us the, you're here to see a minimum Final Four. Uh, you might need to stay around a couple more hours. I'm going to need at least a couple more seasons to get there. Or or a really good offer. I, and guys, I, as much as I love building this team up, I kind of feel the right offer is coming along tonight. I think we're getting the real, the, the big time offer tonight. Chris should be over there sweating bullets of, uh, Sweating, sweating the, uh, gotta, gonna have to come up with a new graphic bullets. <laughs> I mean, we're making our run with Missouri, but I think I started in on this earlier in the episode and, and or earlier in the stream and got away from it. But I, I talked a couple streams ago uh, as we get Tiger on Tiger action here at home to close out the regular season, taking care of business every day, Magnum Davis and Magnum Davis and Davis. Doesn't that sound like somebody that's going to come fix your gutters? <laughs> Magnum Davis and Davis. Oh, my gosh. I'm definitely going to be at home when that contractor shows up. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, when I talked about, like, UCLA being down and how you could, like, a rubber band, right? Like, UCLA was stretched down, ready to pop back up. This Mizzou team stretched up a little bit above where they traditionally are. So it, it gets harder and harder to pull that rubber band up. So that's what we're dealing with right now. Uh, once we get over that hump, it, you know, that's fine. But we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, I left FAMU and Tulane at Season 6. That's accurate. I think Auburn I probably also left around 5 or 6. So... 
Oh, we should have just got our uh, Who's Going Pro email. I mean, it shouldn't be anybody off of this team. Nobody in, on this team's outside of – it was no, Washington wasn't top 50 either. Nobody on this team's even top 50. Marcus Adams. Oh, look at that. Look at that offer that just panned out. We saved a little bit of money, threw out the offer, let it sit. Those other schools never bit, and we landed Marcus Adams to clear – oh, to finish up the recruiting class. Holy cow, guys. So now look at this. He actually ends up being our, our only top 100 guy, four stars, Marcus Adams. The big thing, though, we come down and look. Uh, what do we get? He was a top 10 player at Houston. He's got tremendous work ethic. Unless he's got attitude problems, this is a four-year player. Okay. Then we go to Bo Holmes. He's top five at Houston. Now, he's got issues with work ethic. But again, outside of attitude problems, a four-year player. And then James Scott, I think he was, what, decent? Maybe top – he's top 25. So we pulled a top five, a top 10, and a top 25 out of the region. That's a heck of a recruiting class coming into Missouri next year. I don't care what the stars say. I don't care what the rankings say. This is a stellar class. So, looking good there. Now let's – oh, let's double-check the NBA uh, declarations. Nobody from our school, not a shock. There's Ress, who actually, if you remember, did have a little bit of interest in us last year. Uh, and there's Todd Gray, who was the other one that had a little bit of interest. So they both went pro as freshmen. So again, now somebody was telling me, I don't remember if it, I think it was Ress or was it Gray? Either way, somebody was telling me that either Ress or Gray was a program changer. Six points a game, four rebounds a game, gone as a freshman. Where's Ress? Four points a game, one rebound a game, gone as a freshman. Not not program changers. Nothing even close. So this is what you get. These guys, their potential, they're, they're full of potential, but they're not ready to play, and they go pro too quick. That's not the, not the recipe to be looking for. All right, so here we go. Uh, third time this year we're going to be playing LSU. This time it's on a neutral court, so all good there. They got, they're 11 and 19. Not a great season. We should. I mean, we're favored in this, I'm sure. Are, are none of the teams left in the SEC tournament ranked? How did the standings work? Oh, Georgia and South Carolina and UK. We were actually top five. So we got the top half of the conference. We got the wins, all that. Job security is good. UK, South Carolina, and Georgia. Are they not in it yet? Do they pop in in the next round? That's got to be it, right? Oh, and we blow it. In the first game of the SEC tournament, we absolutely stunk up the joint and lost to an LSU team that's now 12-19 and 19 on the season. So that's pathetic and absolutely crushing god i hate losing in the postseason when you shouldn't we definitely should have moved on there and so that that's the difference in like you know i i said we were eight nine type uh eight nine c type team i still think that uh, a six seven type a six seven c type team you know you don't lose to that garbage in the tournament you just don't so that's really going to hurt us. We'll still, we should still make the tournament as an 8 9 seed. I still stand by that. Could be a little bit lower now, but we did get that win um, at the end of the regular season. Uh, I think it was the very last game, actually. So, Whew, Memphis over UC. All right, selection show. I'm calling 8 9 seed. Got to get it going. All right, let me grab a drink. <clears throat> I 
don't really care though. I'd take a play in. <laughs> I'd take a play in. I just want to be in the tournament this year. Last year was devastating. There's that NJIT again. We beat them, so we're better off than that, right? Quinnipiac, Florida, Minnesota. All right. In Greensboro, the number one overall seed, the Pitt Panthers. What is this? The CBGM? They got Jim Davis over there. Uh, Pitt and CBGMs come out of nowhere. But they did the same thing here in Greensboro. And, of course, Duke gets that two seed in Greensboro. Shocker. Texas. Texas Tech. There's North Texas, so I don't feel as bad about that loss. Looks like they were a decent team. There's Chris's San Diego State team. There's the Tennessee team that beat us at home. There's EKU representing with a nine seed, so that's Greensboro. In Minneapolis, the Yukon Huskies with a one. VCU, Memphis, South Carolina, Oklahoma, Nevada, and UCLA. Florida with a seven. And there we go, eight seed. Missouri Tigers against a nine seed Arizona Wildcats. Uh, Arizona, obviously, much more of a powerhouse. And, uh, you know, we're going to see if we can't grab ourselves a win. I don't think it'll be any better than that. So I'm still extremely disappointed about how things worked out in the SEC tournament. Uh, here in Nashville, it went Syracuse, Georgia, Xavier, Kansas State, UK with a five seed. And in Seattle, the Cowboys, the Hokies, the St. Mary Gales. And the Florida State Seminoles. Oh, Belmont grabbing a nine seed. All right. So there you go. Uh, we jumped right into that eight nine bracket. I think we were the eight. So, you know, one or two bad home losses away from a six or seven seed, but, you know, we, we couldn't get past it. We couldn't get past the first round of the SEC tournament, and we're sitting there at an eight seed with uh, the Arizona Wildcats standing in the way of us getting to the second round and if we get to the second round obviously we get rewarded by the number one seed uh, at least it's not the number one overall seed but uh, and look again there was some louisville cardinals out there in the in the the crappy tournament so maybe they're maybe they're looking for a coach you never know elite eight run is your bet first round loss is my bet If we make the second round, I'll take it. <clears throat> if we make a Elite Eight run, I'll try to eat my hat on camera. All right. Let's see if the postseason, if this postseason is an absolute bust, then even after going 20 and 11, 11 and 7, we're just treading water. We need a win here just to like get back above 60 prestige. Come on, guys. You can do it. Magnum, I trust you. Windland, I trust you. My man Awash coming off the bench. Like somebody can get it done right here. Arizona and Mizu in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Woo! 17 points, baby! 17 points, Missouri headed to the second round. Now they get the one seed. Now they get the one seed, UConn Huskies. But we're only two games away from me trying to eat my hat. Two games away. All right. So uh, that sets us right. That sets up, that completely to me makes up for the first round SEC tournament loss. And now we got a chance. Let's shock the world. Shock the world. It happens every year. You know, one seeds lose every year. They got to lose to somebody. They either got to win it all or lose to somebody. So it might as well be us. Oh, we did it again. We did it again. Oh, the hat's getting nervous. The hat's getting nervous. It's about to have teeth marks on it. 65-51 over UConn, baby. We're in the Sweet 16. Now the prestige is going up. That's right. Woo! Oh, my word. Can you feel the excitement in here? Oh, I, we were up to 13 viewers. We dropped back down to nine. I don't know who the four people that left are, but y'all are missing the best part of the whole stream. What are you thinking? You can't leave in the middle of the tournament. Come on now. It was probably Chris. Hey, it's Sweet 16. We got one more to go. We got one more to go. Oh, 
against the Oklahoma Sooners. Beer Town's chanting, eat the hat in chat. I couldn't agree more. I'd love, I'd love to eat the hat. We, we can debut this hairline all on the live stream right here. Let's see what we got. The Oklahoma Sooners. Can we make the Elite Eight? Can we make can we can we make Doritos Locos tacos look like a profit? They want to see the over under. Oklahoma by eight. It's gonna tell you Mizzou Arena up here for I don't even know why. It, they're not even the like home team or whatever. Uh, but in the post game, you can always see in the report it'll show you it was. Um, yeah, they're all neutral court games. So the, the pregame stuff is messed up, but the postgame shows you the correct thing. So here we go. Eat the hat. Eat the hat. Eat the hat. Let's get it. Oklahoma and Missouri. Who's moving on to the Elite Eight? Is it the Tigers? Oh. Oh. The dreams were shot out of the sky. 83 to 60, they smashed us. Looks like Kellum was in foul trouble the whole game. Only got 21 minutes. Magnum fouled out. But a Sweet 16 run in that season, you know, that's what should have happened last season. And the personalities screwed it up. The personalities absolutely screwed it up. So let's get on through. We'll see who actually makes the Final Four. Take a look at that. See who wins it all. And then we see uh, what the offers are. I mean, I, I really like the way this team is set up. I like the guys that we have coming in. And I also really think, based on the season that we had, combined with our coaching ability, I think we're probably going to have some pretty elite offers here. And, you know, the problem becomes, do you want to stay at a school where your budget's $230,000 every year? The budget's the big thing that makes these schools elite or, or not elite. That's right. Taste success and then ditch them. <laughs> That's what I do every time. Oh, we need to check the Final Four, don't we? I didn't realize. All right. So, in Greensboro, uh, Pitt actually fell to Duke. So, the number one overall seed falls to Duke. One, five, two, three in the Elite Eight there. Nothing exciting. And Minneapolis. Oh, Missouri Tigers came so close, but ultimately it was Oklahoma, and then Oklahoma also knocks out the VCU Rams. Oklahoma's moving on to the Final Four. UCLA made themselves a run, upset Nevada, upset Memphis, couldn't quite get past the Rams. In Nashville, it was Syracuse, it was Georgia, that's all chalk. Uh, Georgia goes on to the Final Four there, so the SEC is going to be represented. And in Seattle, Florida State upset Oklahoma State, and State, Woo! Look at Arkansas State knocking out Virginia Tech. The 15 over 2 upset allows Stanford out into the into the Elite 8 against Florida State. Uh, oh no, Stanford won it. So Stanford's in the Final 4. A 7 seed in the Final 4. So we got Duke, Oklahoma, Georgia, Stanford, no 1 seeds. Two twos, a 5 and a 7. Very interesting Final 4 here. Let's see what we get going. Yeah, now we're back up to 10. Now they start creeping back in. That's like when uh, when the you're losing by 10 with like two minutes to go and everybody starts filing out of the arena. And you get like halfway to your car and you hear the arena start screaming and everybody starts running back in to see what's happening. That's what's happening right now on stream. They, they saw us make the run. Now they got to come back. But we got the, the most exciting part coming up. We got to see what the offers are and what actually happens. So I see Georgia got past Stanford. I did not see the, the results of the other game. Oklahoma and Georgia. The Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia. All right. SEC bringing home uh, the hardware right here as the Georgia Bulldogs beat barely get by Oklahoma 81 to 78. Let's see what the awards look like this year. So 
It's like Talleroy and John Ezell all over it. First team All Americans, your second team All Americans. Come on down, see what happened in the SEC. Oh, uh, all right. If the SEC coach wins the championship, so be it. Yeah, we did beat the champs, didn't we? So he might have won the championship, but we won. We won the uh, the Missouri Georgia game. So suck it, Todd Golden. First team All Conference. We got hosed. Second team All Conference. We got hosed. No awards for Missouri. All right. <laughs> Let's check out this end of season. You know, it always gets to this time of the season. We get to the job hiring. We we get to this point, And then there's some cool offers, and I got to run up and hit the restroom. And that's exactly what's going to happen again here, unless there's no cool offers. So season review, 59 to 66, baby. Yes, so I told you last season we were going to 65 or higher. We actually dropped back, and this season we made up for it. The big-time Sweet 16 runs jumps us up to 66 prestige. So certainly headed in the right uh, right direction there. Hit all of our other targets. Looking good. Let's see where the offers are coming in from. Let's see where the offers are coming in from. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't see anything interesting. Oregon's mildly interesting. But even that would probably be a rebuilding in comparison to what we're doing here. I don't see any reason to leave. What is can you, so? Oregon's prestige is about ten points higher. Okay. Go back to Auburn. <laughs> I'm not going back to Auburn. Can't go back. You can only move forward. We need, we need to find the pack here. All right, so with Missouri, we got 66 team prestige, 79 conference prestige, 230K starting budget, B plus, B minus. So what, we get an extra $30,000, extra 10 prestige. It moves us out west and puts us with the Ducks. I don't know. It's a tough call. It's actually kind of interesting. You know, it's certainly not like a blue blood program. Chris doesn't like it. Jedi likes it. Random task calling for Auburn. Uh, this is the, the cards intermission at the end of the stream i'll let y'all think about it take a look at this screen uh chat it out we'll see what we're we'll see what we're doing when we get back move just for the court <laughs>
See if anybody's got any big opinions over here in the chat. <laughs> the court looks like it's been cracked on by birds. All right, fair enough. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Well, they got the number two player in the country coming in. That's something. Wow. I don't know that I have any information on their roster. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's going to show their whole roster as half-star guys. Because uh, I don't have a scouting report on them. So their biggest contributor is this center who will be back. Speedy Leith. Also a junior, so he'll be back. So you've got a small forward and a center that should both be back to lead the team, and you add in the number two overall player. Oh, my word. It's a really good class. It is. Was Tennessee an option? Oh, yeah, Tennessee was an option. They're on probation. Van Wait. Vandy, after getting beat by 30 points every single game for years, they're on probation. They were cheating to be that bad. Ooh, that's brutal. You know, guys, I, I just can't justify moving for $30,000. Even if they do have a really good recruit coming in, $30,000 over the long haul. It doesn't do it for me. It really doesn't. We're sticking with Missouri. We've already got it built here. That that team would be a rebuild. Let's check out this staff. We're staying with Missouri. We do need a new recruiter. All right. So now it's going to make me do math. All right. So we want to have what we did have. Let's call it 30,000 recruiting budget. All right, so probably around 80,000 here is what I can pay for a for a recruiter. Kevin Sutton's what I already had, right? Let's just see if we can offer him uh, let's go 82,000 for four years. Make the offer and run it. My coaching staff looks like blackjack dealers. Oh, we got Kevin Sutton back. That's right. I think we actually got him for less than we were paying him last year, right? So, yeah, we got close to 70000 Yeah, I think we'll be better off here. Let's finish an advanced set. That was nice. That was nice. I think we just got the same coach back, and we cut his pay. Oh, did one of our other coaches get hired off? I thought I hit advance. Ah. San Diego State coming in, stealing my guys. Come on, man. All right. Need another scouter. All right. What? We didn't want this to go up over 30, 160. So we got about 20. Ooh, not a lot. We got not much, but all we need is a scout. Nate Dixon, you're our man. Third assistant. We'll, we'll call it 18,000. Love it. There 
we go. So again, the budget moves back in the right direction. Let's see if we can finish this off. All right, so we kept our recruiter. Uh, we, we probably moved down slightly in the scouting, but we freed up some money here. Yeah, we freed up some money. We're gonna I think we're gonna have like five thousand, something like that, extra next year. Good, good stuff. Petition the board. Let's get more money. Increase that budget. They might do it this year. The, our, we we spent all of our money. We had good results. Our prestige is up to sixty six. They might do it this year. Are they gonna make a st ah denied. I was gonna say if they bumped it up to like you know high twos, low threes, we could stay at Missouri for a long, long time. All right, folks, that was the end of the season. Let's get through this off season. We will buy reports. We'll get our camps going. We will get through the transfers and see what our team looks like for next year. We're right about two hours. That's pretty much how long it usually takes us to get through an entire stream. I always like to go uh, bell to bell, June 26th to June 26th. So uh, I'm excited to see how this team develops. It sucks that Magnum's going to be gone. But that was our that's the only guy we lost off that team, right? And we brought in two great point guards. Oh, we might be turning the corner, boys. That that might have been the last chance for some team like Oregon or something like that to, to drag us away. You know, after that, it's gonna have to be something big. You're gonna have to come at me with like Arizona or Michigan State or like something crazy. Kansas, North Carolina. Yeah, 66, I mean, we're getting close to being able to, budget is the main thing keeping us in the Great Plains region right now. We got three scholarships, so yeah, we still got 73,000. That's been significantly lower the last couple of times. All right. They're still calling it a top 50 recruiting class, so that's not bad. I would like it to, I would like for them to judge it a little bit higher, but, you know, not gonna worry about it. I like it. That's what counts. All right, so we go premium on the Great Plains for thirty. We could almost do a basic national report, almost. That would leave us with thirty-three thousand, but that we'd be so so low once we got past that. And. What's going to seal it for me is that the basic reports suck. If I'm getting anything, I want the premium report. So we'll stick with the basic. Let's see what the AI suggests, just FYI. Basic and basic. Yeah. All right. I'm going premium, and that's it. Uh, emails. I try not to look. I try to save the... Ah, uh, oh, Patrick Hurd left. Well, I mean, he was a guy that was going to develop anyway. And the good news is we replaced him. Was he like... Oh, yeah, he wanted solid minutes. And I never even... Never noticed it. He wasn't playing over Magnum. Uh, he wasn't playing over Davis. And he wasn't even playing over Wilcox. He needed to develop. So he had unrealistic expectations. Peace out. So, we can at least take a peek at these transfers because we've got that scholarship available. No real interest. Eh, nothing exciting there. Got some decent scores up here. He's an overall, he's an A overall transferring out of UConn. Ooh. My man Dupree Williams, the bucket getter. The outside shooter, the score. Now, there's a guy. Now, here is the problem. Ranked 22 nationally. We could bring him in and it would be a huge get, but he could very well come in and transfer out without ever playing. So, no. Not dealing with transfers. I tried. 
I made an effort. I looked. Uh, didn't do it for me. Uh, you know, Doritos Local Taco said do an extra camp instead. I've thought about that in the past. The gold report is just so overpowered in this year's version because you got to know like who's warm, who's hot, how many of them there are. Like you got to know where those other schools are in this year's version. They did tweak the recruiting up a notch as far as the difficulty goes. So the the gold report, I just I can't live without it. So it's gold or nothing as far as I'm concerned. A basic report, just don't care for it. Uh, I'd rather go in blind and have no idea what the interest was and just invite them in and see if they have interest uh, instead of going with a basic report. It's not for me. All right, so we lost that point guard that we were hoping was going to develop, but we brought in a couple of really good ones, and that makes that late-season pickup of Adams even more important, I think. Uh, let's go ahead and get the summer travel in. Once again, we'll go to a Lin to Indy and Houston. So that's $8,700. So about nine. We're still going to be sitting at thirty-four. So yeah, we got eight or $9,000 more to recruit with this year, so that's nice. And that's just from uh, getting better deals on our coaches. So summer travel is set. What, what does a basic report actually do? Basic report's just going to tell you which ones have interest in you. Like you're still going to get the GPA and stuff. What you don't get is the other schools that they're interested in. Not only who those schools are, but what their level of interest is. So it'll give you a one through 10. And like, if you're number seven, it'll say number seven, Missouri, cool, whatever. And all the rest of them will just like be blank. So you won't know. So here's what the team looks like for next year, guys. And look at that. Bo Holmes and Marcus Adams come in on fire. Two and a half and three and a half star respectively. Both freshmen. Looking solid as it gets. Brian Davis ready for his senior year. And what did I tell you? I told you all last year he was getting that bucket getter attribute. And there it is. Brian Davis is a bucket getter. He's going to throw it down on the SEC this year. Frank Wilcox still looking good. Here at the small forward, we're moving into Doug Kellum's senior year. Moving into Awash's sophomore year. Both solid small forwards. Then we move on to the inside. Uh, Mark Carroll, the walk-on, is kind of highly rated. Not crazy about that. Lon Davis, you know, he was low rated at the beginning of last year. He moved up to three stars for the year. At the end of it, I think he was three and a half. Now he's back down to two and a half. All I know is the guy performed. I was happy with him. Uh, obviously, Wendland's still the starting center. Joe Snyder probably going to step into that backup role. Uh, so we're looking dangerous. Looking dangerous. Scoring-wise, Marcus Adams as a freshman. And look at the two freshman point guards. They can both play defense. They can both score. They can both shoot. They can both pass. The handling will develop as it goes. Brian Davis, the eight in scoring, going to lead, lead the way, hopefully to that, to that elite eight, hopefully to that final four. Because then look at this. This is what happens when you just keep bringing in talent, like incessantly, nonstop. Now, you get Doug Kellum, the senior. We know we expect a lot out of him. Look at all these sevens. Look how high these ratings are. You get Awash, my man, all these sevens. But look, we got Ray Battier sitting over here as a junior saying, hey, what about me? I got a seven in scoring. I got a seven. I got a good jumper. I can rebound. I can play defense. You just build up depth like crazy. All right, so Lon Davis, the scoring looks like it's backed off a little. Okay. Can live with it. James Scott needs to develop, clearly. Uh, Brian Benton also needs to develop. So we're off. We're a little bit. I mean, Lon Davis is legit. Obviously, Bryce Wendland is legit. Scott and Benton both need to develop a little bit. Uh, how's Snyder look? Yeah, Snyder will be the, the third man on that inside rotation. Hopefully Benton and Scott can continue to develop. Davis Winland will start. Snyder will be the third man in the rotation. 
and we probably stay focused on the outside focus on the outside and, and let this thing go so i think if we weren't loaded for bear before look at this team we're hot right now take a look at that pro draft see um i think mangum was the only one we actually lost and i'd be sh- kind of surprised if he actually got drafted Oh, look! Mr. Irrelevant! D'Antoine Mangum. D'Antoine Magnum Mangum from Missouri. Number 60. Mr. Irrelevant in the NBA draft. I'll take that. All day, every day. Click through this because I know uh, looking at the pro draft and looking through some of this stuff, I like to do that at the start of the next stream. So I'll leave the emails. Uh, We're set up on... Uh, We're set up on everything else. I'm going to save it here, but the one thing I am going to do is take a look at the recruits that are interested and see, because we went from, we're in the, the, we're above 65 now, as far as prestige goes. So, let's take a look at the Almanac and just see uh, schools. So you don't have to scroll very far down to get to us anymore. I mean, Ohio State, Georgia Tech, Washington Huskies, Georgia Bulldogs, they just won a championship and they're at 61 prestige? What were they before, 12? All right, so that's weird. Uh, But anyway, we're climbing. So we've about caught up to UCLA. So the point is you don't have to scroll down all that far. Yeah, there's... Look at Louisville up at 90. They, they've they been terrible lately. Oh, they're the CIT champions. Woo. I guess they were in the finals three years ago. But how's this team? They went 10 and 20 and then went to the CIT. How are they a 90 prestige? They were the champions second round then final. Okay. So it it must be that just holding them over. Whatever. Let's take a look at... Let's take a quick look at our coach, actually. The defensive skill is almost a 90. The recruiting's at 80. Player development's at 91. We're cracking. Yes, sir. All right. See what kind of recruits we got interested. We got five-star players interested, guys. It is on now. The only four-star player that's not interested is Irvin Jackson. That's because of his GPA. He's a non-qualifier. All the four-stars are interested, and now we're getting the five-star players. So it's about to be over. We're taking it over with Missouri. I don't know. I might not have to leave here. I might not have to leave here. We might be able to do our whole entire stream. Might be able to get another 30 seasons in with Missouri. We'll see what happens. Let's see what happens. Guys, I'm going to wrap it up right there. I had a blast tonight. Uh, I'm super glad that we had a great stream. It was The last stream was so devastating. It took me down. Uh, made me question myself, but it, it was all that locker room drama. Once we got rid of that, got these guys on the same page, it all came together, made a big run, fell short in the SEC tournament, but had a very exciting uh, run in the NCAAs all the way to the Sweet 16. Uh, fell just just short of me having to try to eat my hat so uh you know maybe that's a blessing in disguise but (laughs) i'm cutting it here man i had a blast thank you all for stopping by i hope to catch you next time uh we'll see i don't know if i'll do something this weekend or or uh, sometime mid next week but either way i'll catch y'all next time and thanks for stopping by